All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk chapter eight, corporate strategy diversification. Uh, you know, we mentioned our diversification back when we were looking at, at the five growth considerations, and remember that was one of them, one of the types of growth. Um, but we need to get more focused on diversification because back when I was in school and even today, oh, you need to diversify. Spread your risk around. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, diversification has been going on for so long that finally the jury's in. And it doesn't look too good for diversification. I'm not saying that diversification doesn't ever work. It doesn't ever lead to greater returns. But what we were doing is we were going out and buying companies based on simply the financials. Look at the return. So if we put this couple million dollars in this company, we'll get that return. Look at that like it was a, a certificate of deposit. It doesn't work like that. Companies were buying other companies that they literally ran in the ground, and for several reasons, and we're going to talk about that. So diversification as a, as a major strategy can be, can be less than fruitful. So if you're going to do it, you need to do it right. Here's a perfect example of diversification done wrong. And this is my example. This happened with me. I was part of it. This happened about 1980. I was in the bank, I was in commercial lending, and one of my customers came in one day, and it was the best customer I had. I can actually say I've known a man who literally had millions of dollars in his pocket. You know, a lot of millionaires, it's on paper, it's in their assets. This guy had tens of million dollars on deposit with me. And I used to say, we can do something with this money. You know, I just like it sitting right there. I mean, he would wasted money, but it was just sitting there on deposit. So the point is, I knew this guy, and he had millions of dollars. It's a great guy. He was an engineer from Georgia Tech. Just a good old boy. Worked hard all day long. Wore khakis and work boots. Every time I saw him, khakis and work boots. And what his expertise was, and the way he had made so much money, he had figured out how to build these small bridges over swamp land, these really kind of hard to get to bridges. He had some kind of engineering technique he had devised, and buddy, he built them all over the world. And they were little, just little tiny bridges, but nobody else could build them, and he knew how to build them. So he came in one day, and he goes, Mike, I need to borrow a half million dollars. I, di I didn't blink an eye. I pulled out a note, I'm writing it up half million dollars. He said, just put it on 90 days. I'll pay you in 90 days or I'll roll it over or whatever. Yeah, so I'm easy. I don't even have to do a credit. I mean, I know this man. I, yeah, yes, sir. I'll be glad to give you a million dollars. And I said, well, you know, I've got to fill out some paperwork, so you at least have to tell me what the purpose of the loan is. And he said, oh, yeah, I'll be glad to tell you. He goes, have you ever had any of that Kobe beef? That's exactly what he said. He said, have you ever had any of that Kobe beef? This is 1980. I said, no, sir, I don't know what you're talking about. He says, well, we just went to Japan. Well, I spent about a month over there. We were building some bridges for them boys over there. And he said, they took me out to eat one night. And he said, they got me all socked up, boy, that stuff. It don't taste good, but it, it, anyway, it's hilarious. He's telling me this story about them taking him out and getting him all socked up as he said, and he goes, and they bought me a steak, and Mike, you could eat that thing with a fork. It's the most thing I've ever, never had a steak like that in my life. It just went on and on. He said, so I asked him, what in the world is this? And they told me it was Kobe beef, and then they said, and we can sell you a franchise. You can start growing this in America. And he said, so they gave him all the literature. He brought it. He had all the brochures. I don't know if y'all know about Kobe beef. I'm sure you've heard about it. They massage the cows. They give the cow a high protein, really good tasting diet. They pipe in music to the cows. They do they whatever. I mean, and supposedly it's just the best tasting $200 a pound beef you've ever had in your life. So I said, sure. He says, I've even got some land out in Evans, and I'm just going to put a little beef for them up there and buy me some Kobe beef. Fine. He came back in 90 days later. He said, Mike, I need to pay that loan off. Still a half million dollars. 
And I said, uh, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, it just didn't work out. He later wrote me a check for $500,000 and paid it off. Um, I said, what happened? He goes, well, I, basically, he couldn't find anybody to massage his cows. He couldn't find any cow keepers or whatever. It just failed miserably. My point is, the best bridge builder in the world Demand so that he can't even meet that demand. He tried to diversify in something he had nothing, no idea about. He didn't know anything about cattle farming or produce raising or whatever and lost everything in it. Lost half a million dollars for a little three months. He was a Kobe beef farmer. Diversification, the key to diversification is, number one, you have to buy something that can be run by the management that's in place when you buy it. You don't know anything about these other businesses. Why do you think you can buy them and then go run them? That does not work anymore. That used to be a management theory, that if you could manage this company, you could manage anything. And we found that that theory was crazy. No, if you're a car man, you're a car man. You can go from car company to a car company, but you can't, you can't go from a car company to making pizzas. The vice president of Pizza Hut knows a whole lot more about pizzas in that kind of market than you do making cars, even though you both make the same amount of money. It's not about that. It's about expertise. It's about understanding the processes. So when you go into diversification, the one thing you need to understand is I can't run it myself. When I buy the company, I've got to buy some management, and I've got to let them run it. So that's the key to diversification. When you diversify, you should ask three questions. I take it back. When you diversify, it should be three tests. There are three tests that have to be met positively before you can decide or you should decide, yes, we're going to go diversify. The first test, the industry attraction test. Is there a good constant yield in this industry? Does the industry as a whole make some money? If just one player is making money and everybody else is not doing good, that doesn't pass the test. Does the industry make money? Okay, test one. Test two, the cost of entry test. You can't, it can't be so cost prohibitive to go into this that you will lose any profitability that you might make. So you, the, the cost cannot erode any profits that you might make. It might look great, attractive, but dead gum it. You can't spend more than you make coming out of it. And the third thing, the better off test. Are you better off now than you were before you bought this? You know, are you better off? Did these things, excuse me one second. What's he, why is he calling me? I got, I got to take it. Excuse me. Bieber, what's up? Boy, what's wrong with you? I was wondering when you were going to call me. You are, you are crazy. Number one, pull your britches up. Okay, pull your britches up. That is ridiculous. You're going to trip. Anyway, and the girls don't like that, by the way. Pull your britches up. What is wrong with you? Dude, you know how much money you are making? Number two, do you know how much money you're about to lose? You are crazy. You don't even sing good anymore. What if? I know you lost your monkey. Big deal. Everybody's lost a monkey somewhere along the road. You can get them. We'll get you another monkey. Don't worry about that. You got to chill out. People, you, you just freak. I mean, I, I try to support you, but I'm having trouble taking up for you. You're just a freak, dude. All right, calm. Quit crying. Quit. I didn't mean to make you cry. Stop it. Look, I'll call you tonight. I'll call you tonight. Everything will be good. Look, tomorrow we'll go to Chuck E. Cheese's. I promise. I'll pick you up. We'll go to Chuck E. Cheese's. You love that place. And everything will be good. All right, man. Peace. I'm sorry. I had to take that. I apologize. Third one. Better off test. Are you better off once you bought it? Or do you think you'll be better off once you diversify? than you are now. You, if you're not, why would you do it? So the industry attraction test, yes or no, cost of entry test, and the better off test.
You've got to determine that. Now, here's the strategic fit. You, your company, whatever you're doing now, has got to somehow fit with this diversification company that you're getting ready to go into. There's got to be that kind of fit. You need to maintain, make sure that you've got some kind of specialized expertise that's going to help you manage this other company or help you leave this other company alone. You can exploit common competitive advantages. Maybe this company that you're getting ready to buy, this industry that you, this company in this industry you're going to buy, they have a competitive advantage that you can tie on to with your company now and help you. A well-known brand, things like that, distribution centers, economies of scales. Do you both use kind of the same processes? Can you both use the same delivery systems or some commonalities in raw materials? So can you find those things? That's the kind of potential look you're looking for when you, when you look at these diversification opportunities. Because just to diversify is crazy. Now, if you diversify into unrelated businesses, completely unrelated businesses, number one, again, is the industry profitable? Uh, will diversification help you reach your financial targets? Maybe my company right now, I'm not going to reach my target, but by diversifying the combined, I can reach my financial targets. And will this diversification significantly improve the well-being of the parent company? So we looked at those things of diversification into unrelated. Are there any questions? All right, calm, good gracious, calm down. What in the world was that? Y'all insane. What did you say? I wouldn't go, oh, what in the world? Well, I don't get it. What's, what, where are y'all going? Where have y'all been? That's the question. Y'all can't act like that up in here. I'm sorry. I'm going to put my foot down. I mean, I've had, I've had, what have I had up in here? I've had camels and elephants and I've had beach balls and y'all have gone off the deep end. That's just ridiculous. All right, how do you evaluate the strategy of a diversified company? What do you use to monitor that? How do you evaluate the strategy of a diversified company? The first thing you need to look at is the industry attractiveness. How attractive is that industry? Because I'm trying to figure out if this strategy is going to work. So how attractive is that industry? I also need to evaluate the business unit competitive strength. The thing that I'm getting ready to buy, what is their competitive strength? Do they have one? If they do, how high is it? They've got to. Why would I buy it if they didn't? Number three, I need to check the competitive advantage potential of cross-business strategic fit. That's a mouthful. I agree with that. What is my competitive advantage and will it give me one? between the crossfit between our two companies. How can I use these two companies? How can I mix these together and create that competitive advantage? Will it be there? That's what I need to know. I also need to check for resource fit. Are my companies using kind of the same resources? Because if they are, economies of scales just come to play. It's wonderful. If I've got a supplier and I can just increase that supply chain and increase that uh, amount of supply that's coming through and try to reach in improvements through economies of scales that way. So that's key. And can I rank the performance prospects of business units? Can I actually give a realistic return uh, pro forma? This is what they're going to do, and here's how they're going to return. I need to be pretty gum confident in those numbers. And I need to make sure that I can craft a new strategic plan for the entire unit. Parent company, 
the, diversif div the company that I have acquired through diversification, can I make sure that there is a new strategy there? And I have to put a new strategy. I can't go do that and just use the old strategy of this one or that one. It's a brand new thing. It is absolutely brand new. And I can't count on it just loping along like it was. This is a brand new entity. So I have to come up with a brand new strategic plan that incorporates both of these working in concert. All right, so we looked at all kinds of things about diversification. Uh, again, we were just kind of not, kind of lukewarm on it. The, the, the jury's out, the uh, jury's in. Diversification really hasn't worked as a, as a, as a you can't really count on it uh, just because of the newness of it and the fact that we're getting into areas that we're not sure about. If you do want to make it work, you have to hire, you have to buy not the only the company, you have to buy the management and the expertise to run it. You cannot run it by yourself. If you could, you'd be in that business right now, but you're not. All right, so peace. Uh, th th that ends chapter eight. Uh, we're getting close to the end here. Uh, y'all read the book. Everybody be cool. And um, God, y'all's dancing is insane. What is wrong with y'all? Some kind of crazy class. Anyway, see y'all later. Bye.